there, Dr. Eddie Weller. It is a great day to be alive. Today, we're going to talk about shaping your life and this thing called seven days of success. You know, at Getting Weller, we always talk about healthy body, healthy mind, and healthy relationship. It's super important. And when we understand why the body's doing what it's doing, physically, emotionally, nutritionally, hormonally, and all the above of the craziness of who we are as humans, we start to realize, like, uh, I don't know if I need that in my life or I need more of that in my life, but we're not sure. So I want to talk about several different things today, and I really want to talk about shaping your life. It, it's an acronym. So I've got my glasses. Don't mind. I've been taking notes here on my desk, so I'll be going back and forth. I, yeah, it's uh, just been a little bit on the crazy side because when I talk to the hundreds, now thousands and thousands of different patients, everybody has a similar issue. We all do. We all have a similar issue because I have a problem and you have a problem. And whatever that problem is, it's your problem. My problem is a big deal because it's my problem. Again, your problem is a big deal because it's your problem. And when we step back and reflect on really what's going on, we have to kind of go way back. And I want to talk about shaping your life. S-H-A-P-E. Okay, it's an acronym. So the S to me is one of the absolute most important aspects of who we are. And that's your spiritual side of who you are. The connectedness to our Creator. It's imperative. And when there's a disconnect of that, marriages fail. Uh, it, it just, it's, the relationships fail. Uh, when you don't have that, you know, for instance, recently I was talking to a friend of mine and kind of going back and forth and talking to another buddy and we're all chit-chatting. And sometimes the Holy Spirit, you know, just kind of stabs your chest a little bit, just going, ah, did they really need to know that, Eddie? We all have been there. And most of us don't put ourselves in check. I think, that, you know, when you ask God to guide you, the spiritual connection, me, I'm a, I'm, I'm a Christ guy. I am, through and through. And so, but when you ask the Holy Spirit to kind of follow you and just guide you and just push around you and lean you and just steer you and do all the things for your life, you get convicted and you feel guilty. I remember a pastor once told me, never tell somebody something you want them to forget in five minutes. It's a really cool way to live your life. Because when you say something to somebody like, well, my, why, am I, why, why would I say that? And I have been guilty of that. We all have over and over and over. That just actually recently happened to me just two, three days ago. And I was talking to another dad uh, in the golfing world. And we're just chit-chatting back and forth. I'm like, wow, we sound like two like old women in a sewing circle kind of gossiping and just having a... Like, what are we doing right now? So I'm going to actually go today. I'm going to talk to him today and say, hey, um, I'm going to retract some of the things we we're chit-chatting about because we we're talking about that other person. And I'm going to let that other person know because I've let that other person know over and over and over again. Again, that's you freeing up your spirit, being convicted. We've all been there. How many times have you said something to somebody or thought about something about somebody that was not so, I'll say it, nice, being a jerk? ego filled and we have to stop that we got to totally end that and just go no 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 I can't be that that's the spiritual side of us that's that relationship we have when I ask you know God every morning I ask God I don't know what you're up to today but whatever you're up to I want to be part of it and if you want to show off use me how freeing is that I ask it all the time use me why wouldn't you want, use me? Because I want to make dad, I call God dad a lot. You know, it's a different relationship from father to dad. It's a different bond. And I said, dad, if you want to use me, use me, man. Just use me. I am ready. I am all in, in any way, shape, or form. Because um, when you have this relationship, this spiritual side of us, then the H part of shape falls right into place with that. And that's called humility. It is. Being humble is a trick. I'm telling you, we all have this. We live in this world of compare. Do we not? Again, that spiritual side, when you ask God to guide you, God's gonna, if you want patience, God's going to give you a reason not to be. If you want more love in your life, God's going to give you a reason not to have it. Mm -hmm. You want more money? God's going to give you a reason not to have it. So you appreciate it when you do. Be very careful with what you ask for. But the humility is, is such a big deal. You know, I, I, 
again, my son plays golf and my daughter dances like a champ. She took after me a little bit. And so she can shake it like a Polaroid picture. And so I'm dating myself. <laughs> and, and when I watch her dance or I watch my son play golf and watch him do these things, when you do very well and you win awards and trophies, it's super important you give credit to where credit's due and say, that, you know, God's given me a gift. I thank you, God, for the ability that I have, and I'm doing the best I can. So when you work super hard and you're golfing three, four, five days a week to make your game better, or you're dancing three, four, five days a week, literally, that's what my middle school kiddos are doing right now. And so when they're doing that, you worked too hard to be lucky. But in that process... Humility has got to be a big deal where you just kind of slow down and let other people talk about you versus you talking about you. Oh, I did this. I did that. I was able to do this. I, I, I. This is where ego gets in the way. And I'm telling you, pride gets in the way. And when pride is in the way, that keeps God away from you because that's where the enemy plays. This is true. There's a light and dark side to our life. And when you let ego get in the way, holy cow, I am speaking to the choir of me. I have been there over and over and over. So I surround myself with people that I have given permission to, to call me out. It's really important because we slip. We're not perfect. I'm far from it. And so when that happens, you go, holy cow, and you get convicted. And it's just, ah, it's like talking about somebody or talking about yourself and, you know, boasting and that kind of thing, making others less than without intending to. That's the part of humility that needs to be put in check frequently. Because when you have that spiritual side of you and you start to get humble, then you start to realize, what am I able to do? That's the A, ability. What are my abilities? I'm 5'9", 185 pounds. I have tried through and through to touch a basketball rim. I've tried and tried and tried growing up and I can't do it. I can get to the middle of the net and I'm there, but that's it. I'm not going to dunk a ball. I know that's not my ability. People are like, well, you can do anything you want to do. No, you cannot. Sorry, no. You have been given an ability to do a certain something. It's just true. Put Shaquille O'Neal on a racehorse and then use a jockey on a racehorse and let's see who's going to win. See what I mean? Sure, we all have the ability to ride a horse, but again, to that next level. What, are you, what is your ability? What is that thing that so comes natural to you? What is that? What is that? It's just like, I get to do this. I'm like, why is it? This isn't all that hard for me um, because it feels so right. It comes so naturally to me. That's how I felt like growing up skateboarding. There are certain tricks that I could do. And, and growing up, I still skate, by the way. And growing up skateboarding, I, I call me crazy. I was pretty good. I enjoyed it. I liked it. And then, you know, certain abilities, like I play racquetball. I love racket sports. Not a big tennis fan, uh, but I like, you know, racquetball. And now I'm getting into pickleball. I never thought. I used to make fun of, you know, it's an old person sport. Oh, yeah, not so much. Not so much. Um, yeah. Isn't it funny that whenever you make fun of something, God brings it into your life and you go, um, wow. Um, what? Whatever you make fun of, you end up becoming or experiencing. Be very careful with that tongue of yours. Very careful. Watch what you say about others. Watch what you say about each other. Right? And yourself. Work. People. Strangers. TV. Just be very careful of what you project. It's a big, big deal. I used to have these conversations with my mother. Because her fuse tend to be a little bit on the shorter side. And I said, Mom, you know, if something wasn't going her way, she'd say some few choice words. I'm like, what's going on right now? Well, you know what I mean, Eddie. No, I don't. That's not nice, Mom. That's not nice. Again, we all have our things. God bless her. I love her. And uh, she's no longer with us. She left us recently. But it's, you know, as I always growing up with her and feeling that, my grandfather was the same way. He was pretty short. He had a short fuse. And so I think of the, you know, when we have humility and when we pause and we reflect, when we bite our tongue, when we bite our emotions of what's coming out, you may think it, but don't speak it. You don't speak it. 
And you have to go back again to the ability of who you are. So the spiritual side of us is the connection with God. That The humility part of us is, is like, wow, I'm going to do the best I can with who, who or what I am and not boast. And then because I have an ability, a natural innate ability to do this thing. I pride myself on being one of the absolute top chiropractors in the world. I do. And again, why do I say that? Um, I'm very, very, ask Tiger Woods if he thinks he's pretty good at golf. I feel the same way when it comes to the type of chiropractic that I deliver. I've been working on it for 25 plus years. That's as a doctor, 28 years. And so you'd think after working that long, you get pretty good at it. Yes, I don't toot my horn on it ever because I'm very comfortable with how I play. Right how I play in this thing called my professional life of chiropractic. I'm very good at it. And so I'm, I'm comfortable. And with that confidence, not cockiness, that confidence, it's your ability that you've been working on, Eddie, for all of this time. You get pretty good at it. Don't you? Sure you do. But we have to, as we go and understand our ability of what we're doing, some people are really good at typing. Some people are really good at being on camera. Some people are really good at reading. You know, some people can go speed read, flash all the way through. Everybody's different. We all have a gift. And so when we stop comparing, live in humility and stop comparing and understand the ability of the beautifulness, if you will, the beauty of humanity and how we are all divinely created, more importantly, divinely gifted in something. We all have something. I don't care if you're an entrepreneur, if you're an employee, if you're collecting cans. Uh, I, I don't care what you're doing. We all have a gift and an ability, innate ability to do something. We need to do that because we all have a different personality type. It's, this is a really, really big deal. This is part of the SHAP personality. Our personality, what kind do you have? There's several different types of personality tests. Everything from, uh, oh my gosh, there's so many, Myers-Briggs to the DISC to uh, Predictive Index. I mean, there's so many different types. I also like Strength Finders. It's, I'm a huge fan of it. Uh, you can Google all these or, no, actually, duck, duck, go it. Um, when you do that and you understand all the different personalities, then you really don't have to compare because you're not like me and I'm not like you. Look at the data. And when we look at that data and we see the different personality types, it becomes freeing. It becomes completely freeing. I, uh, growing up, I'm a go, go, go. I am. I, uh, I don't sit still. I go, go, and I figure it out on the way. I'm not a planner. Uh, it's just not who I am. I don't care for that kind of structure. I like my back against the wall. However, somebody like my brother, let's say, he and I are crazy for God together, and but we're very different personality types when it comes to making decisions and doing things in this thing called life. We both have an ability and a gift to do the certain things. That's different. This is a personality type. And the personality type is he's more of a planner. He needs to structure. He lives in certainty. I like uncertainty. See the difference of that? Doesn't make us right or wrong or better than one another. Just different. Unique. It's how God created us. We all have a different personality. I am a big fan of the DISC, D-I-S-C. It's a DISC personality test. Really, really cool. I like it because it makes it really easy for people to understand each other. You can take many other tests, but this is a really good one uh, because the lay person, if you will, the people that do not understand personality types, strength finders and DISC, you learn a ton about you and others around you, and now you know how to relate differently. And so when you understand the different personality types, then... You don't have to create judgment. That's just who they are. And so, because when you know that, but if you don't know that, now you create judgment. It would be really cool if everybody had, you know, their own, on their resume, they put on their resume their DISC profile, their Strength Finders profile, profile their Predictive Index profile, you know, the Myers-Briggs, and put that all on there. So when people go, oh, I know this type of person, that makes sense. And so when we understand that, then we can stop from the pointing fingers or making other less than and just sit back and go, that's just who they are. It's so cool. I have friends of mine that absolutely love going to work, sitting in a cubicle and getting all of their stuff done and not being bothered. That is heaven on earth for them. God bless them. I go out of my ever loving mind. Doesn't make it wrong. Just different. I'm glad God made us all unique because I wouldn't like that. And on the flip side, they wouldn't like doing what I do. 
because it's like, oh my gosh, this guy, he doesn't sit still. Squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. Maybe. But again, I like the structure of not having structure, which is the freedom of thought and creating and creating and creating. I love to create. Oh man, what a great idea. I like to create. I, I, I do those things. And then we have other people that are finishers. And so I, I struggle with finishing, very much struggle with finishing because I guess maybe I'm a fixer. Uh, just I, I just am. And so I always find people coming into my life for some reason. Oh, I know the reason. That's how God works. Is that uh, uh, people not necessarily need fix, but help or remedy or serving. That's what I'd like to do. And I do that pretty frequently, daily, uh, with people. Uh, my text that happens and emails that happen. So we all have our own ways of doing things. And when we all do that, then what happens? We need to stop and just pause because at the end of the end, what really, really matters, what totally just what matters is the experience that you are creating with the gift that you have for others. I've recently wrote a post on this and I just talked about, you know, if uh, I was telling a story about I used to build homes. My father's taught me how to build houses and, and is doing drywall and electric plumbing. No, I, there's nothing in a house I pretty much couldn't fix. Nothing. Uh, I've just been blessed that way and I was able to learn throughout growing up with my dad. Uh, he was a contractor and all that crazy fun stuff. And uh, But if your car breaks, don't call me. Nope. Call AAA. Not a car guy. You know, I can do the really general stuff, obvious, but um, yeah, change a tire, oil, whatever. But I'm like, uh, I've changed the belt, plugs. Uh, but again, besides that, yeah, not so much. I don't know cars. Again, you have to know that about yourself. However, so here I am the other day, and my daughter's birthday was coming up. It was coming up in a few weeks. And I'm doing drywall. We had a basement flood at the house, so I'm putting all new drywall in and new insulation, all that stuff. Well, the painter's coming in 48 hours. This was actually yesterday. So the painters come in 48 hours. So here I am sanding walls. And I'm on my third coat of mud on the wall. And, you know, we when you something floods, they usually cut two feet above the floor. They don't take out the whole wall because it'll wick, right? The water will wick up the drywall. So as a protective, uh, preventative, I should say, is you cut two feet above the floor, take out the insulation, take out the drywall, and then, you know, let it dry, blow fans. Put the insulation back in, patch the drywall, and then go to town. Well, doing drywall, if you haven't done it before, is an absolute art. It is. It is an art because if the wall's not right, it is an eyesore. We all know that. It's an art, and it takes people a long time to master that. And so I have done tons and tons of drywall, tons of it. And be, over the years of building my offices, currently I'm in my 12th office in the past 25 years. This is my 12th office. So I've done construction on all 12 of them, therefore hanging drywall, plumbing, electric, all that stuff. And so you get pretty good at it and pretty confident with it. So there I was yesterday and I'm sanding the walls, sanding the walls, and I'm smoothing it out. And it looks like, I mean, it is smooth. It looks great. And it, if it didn't look great, I wouldn't be here because I would still be there making sure that it looks nice. That's how I like to roll. However, what I'm thinking about when I'm filthy and sneezing and hacking because of the dust and all the yuck is I'm thinking about my daughter's having a birthday. She's having a birthday party, sleepover, in two weeks in that ba in that room that I'm working on. The entire basement is going to be full of girls. They're going to have a little. They're going to have a big slumber for her birthday. Right now, it's concrete and unfinished walls. And it, yeah, and there's a bunch of work that needs to happen in the next week or so, and it absolutely will, and it will get done. Why is that so important? Because of the experience that I'm going to create for her. And so when you do something for somebody, I was with my son yesterday, and this woman was carrying a tray at a restaurant. She turned and started walking, and her wrappers, I think it was from her crackers, fell off the tray, and she kept walking. My son gets on up walks on over and grabs the wrappers and throws them away. See, it's the experience. She turned and looks at, oh gosh, thank you. It's the experience that you've given somebody. You've created for somebody. That's why we use our gifts. The abilities that what we have, that God has given us, as we humble ourselves, see how this all ties in? As we humble ourselves, we create an experience for people based on the different unique personality styles that we are. I just put all of shape together. We have to understand that what you do every single day, you do not have to do. You don't have to do it. 
at all. You don't have to be listening to this, but you get to. See what I'm saying? That's the uniqueness of who we are. You don't have to go to the gym. You get to go to the gym. I had a dad the other day in the office, and we were chit-chatting, and a patient of mine, I'm like, hey, what's going on tonight? He goes, oh, I got babysit my kiddos tonight. I'm like, oh, hold on. Time out. Time out. You don't babysit your kids. They're your children. You get to spend time with your kids today. You get to spend time with them. You don't have to babysit. Do you understand the difference? Huge difference. One is like I'm doing a task. The other one is a desire. And so when I get to, hey, I'm going for a car ride. Do you want to come with me? It's, it's that experience that you have. Why do you have the home that you have? I, uh, I get up in the morning. First thing I do, straight up, take my bed sheet, and I put my blanket, pillows, everything up. I make the bed as soon as I get out of bed. I do. That's what I like to do. And so because it creates a different experience. One, you just completed a task in my headspace. But two, I don't go to bed in a messy bed. So I like to have my home look like a hotel. It's nice. Everything's in its place. That's how it should be. And so this is why when we work at, not to say it's perfect, people. It's just creating experience in your life. I, I've always taught my kids a clean house is a happy house. A clean car is a happy car. Again, when the physical environment's in chaos, so is your psychological one. True story. So this is why the experience is a big deal. How many, the other day, I would say the other day, two, three weeks ago, I'm with my son. We're cruising. We're going to his golf tournament. And this guy comes up next to me and barrels next to me. And he, I saw him weaving behind me. I'm like, what's going on right now? Like, what's going on? And he's weaving behind me. I'm okay. And, uh, and so he pulls up next to me and we look on over and he flips me off. I'm like, wow. Liam looks at me, my son. He's like, what did you do to piss him off, dad? I'm like, what do you think I did, Liam? He's like, I don't know. I said, Liam, why are you taking ownership of how he feels? Why are you doing that? He's creating an experience for us right now, and it's uncomfortable, isn't it? He's like, yeah. I said, okay, so let's create an experience back to him. I said, roll down your window. So I've got tinted windows. So I was like, roll down your window. So he rolls down his window, and I look at this guy. I go, hey! And I scream on over at this guy, and he's looking at me, and I put my hand out, and I blew him a kiss. I did. My son leaned back in the car. He's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I said, and this guy looks at me. I go, look at him, Liam. And Liam's, you know, slightly looking over in the corner of his eye because he's all embarrassed. And he looks at him. And this guy's like, makes this weird face and drives away. And my son starts dying. He's like, I can't believe you blew him a kiss. I'm like, should I have flipped him off too? Because now I'm playing in his game. And I don't want to experience what I was experiencing. So I changed the environment. This is why it's really, really important to understand when you change your environment, you can change your mind. And so when the SHAPE acronym, S-H-A-P-E, the spiritual side of us, humility, it's really important. Our ability, our personality, and the experiences, it all leads, are you ready? Started this years ago. It all leads to living seven days successfully. I call it getting well or seven days of success. Here we go. Oh, this is so fun. So here we are. We talk about the days that are important and how the days work and all that good stuff. And oh gosh, it's Monday. I can't believe I got to go to work. It's Monday. Yep. That's how this works. Ready? Motivational Monday. What are you motivated for? What are you motivated to do? What's moving you forward? What is it like? I have to go to work. No, you get to go to work. Are you motivated to start the day and going, gosh, thank you. I get to go do and love what I love. I, I, it's not like, oh, gosh, I can't wait till Friday. This sucks. I can't stand this. No, no, no. Why live that way? I don't want to live that way. No, no, no. Motivational Monday. You got to be motivated to do something based on what you want for the vision you want for your life. Create a vision. Write down the things that you want. Put it on the wall. Do that. Again, one of the things I ask every single day, I'm motivated, God, if you're going to show off today, use me. I don't know what you're up to, but I want to be part of it. That motivates me because now I'm looking for all the different reasons to serve. All the different ways that I can serve today. Because when it, you move from Motivational Monday, you roll right into Gratitude Tuesday. Gratitude Tuesday. What are you grateful for? I send videos to people on my phone. Send it to them, or text messages. I don't do email. I'm awful at email. I check my email once a week. Can't stand it. Uh, I check my mail in my house once a week. I can't stand it. 
But again, what are you grateful for? You know, it, it, I write letters. I have thank you cards that I write to people. When's the last time you wrote a thank you card? When's the last time you shot a little video in your car at a park? I don't care if you're in a bathroom brushing your teeth and you're sitting and recording. You're like, hey, I just want to let you know that I love you in my life and thank you for being you and on and on. Isn't that a cool way? Be grateful for the others that God has put in your life. I am. And I try to focus on that daily. I hear today's, you know, I always do the podcast. I'm going to do these more often, but right now it's getting weather Wednesday. I talk about that because Wednesday is what if Wednesday. What if you asked for that raise? What if you let go of that grudge? What if you asked her out? What if you stopped and maybe put your hands a little bit over your shoulders, palms up and and say, God, uh, I want to feel you. I know as uncomfortable it is, it was uncomfortable for me years ago. Put your hands up, like, what did I put my hands up for? I want to jump off the high dive every Wednesday. I want to do something outside. I want to let go of something. I want to move forward from something. What if I let go of that grudge? What if I made some phone calls? I got humbled not too long ago, about six, seven weeks ago, with a friend of mine who I've given permission to call me out. He called me out, and it wrecked me. I collapsed on my living room floor, bawling for three hours. Had a, I, I did. I had a moment. And it ruined me because I was convicted of certain things that I was doing to myself and or others, and it was not right. And I was called out, and I needed that. We all need that. What if I let go of that grudge? So what I did is I called. I asked God, who is it? Who did I do? Who did I, what, what happened here? And I got seven names. There were seven names that were given to me. I'm just sitting here to just, oh, oh my gosh, they're in my head. Oh, there's another one in my head. And I called all seven of those people and asked, what if, it was a Wednesday, just so happened to be, what if you let go of that? What if you asked for forgiveness? What if you apologized and said, do you forgive me? See, when you just say sorry, sorry is so short-lived. It's like treating somebody for a meal. It's so short-lived versus, do you forgive me? See, when you forgive me, so they invite you back into their life. But what if Wednesday? What if you signed up for that class? What if you asked for that raise? What if you, see what I mean? We all want those things and we have those desires. I wish one day I could do it on Wednesday. What if Wednesday? Because when you start doing that, you begin to transform. <laughs> Here we are, Transformation Thursday. Transformation Thursday. When you transform from something, you can't revert back to it. It's impossible. Again, I use the analogy. Caterpillar grows into a butterfly. It can't go back. No, because it transforms. What are you transforming? What are you letting go of? What are you looking in yesterday's pain for? Don't take yesterday's pain into tomorrow's pleasure. Transform from it. That's who I used to be. Oh, gosh, I have no energy. What are you going to do to get more energy? What are you going to do to get more love? What are you going to do to get more money? What are you going to do to have more God in your life? You need to transform your thinking. Transform your environment. Transform all of who you are. You're, from your diet to the spiritual side of you to your family, relationships, career. Whatever that is that you know. Only you know. You need to transform from that. Because when you do, you get free. Oh my goodness. Freedom Friday. I love Freedom Friday. To me... Friday, I always loved three-day weekends. I used to get in a bunch of trouble in high school. I had 200 and something detentions in high school. Yeah, I was that kid. Uh, class clown kid, goofball, entrepreneur kid, but uh, yeah, that was me. Anyway, I used to get in trouble on Thursday afternoons intentionally because I'd get written up, go to the dean's office, they'd call my parents, give me a pink slip, and suspend me on Friday. I'm like, this is the goods. And now I have three-day weekends all the time. This is great. I did that pretty frequently, by the way. And so it, it was just a lot of fun. And I'm thinking, why wouldn't I want to have three-day weekends for the rest of my life? Well, that's how I set up my life. Well, you're lucky. No, 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 no. That's how I set it up. You know, I've heard a story. I was at a seminar. Uh, it was just awesome. I was at this seminar. And this woman who is a dental hygienist. And she was like, I would love a three-day weekend. And we we're talking. And so a friend of mine, who's her coach, and so he was chit-chatting with her. He's like, why not ask your boss, the dentist, why not ask your boss, instead of working an eight-hour day, work four 10-hour days? Why not? Those patients are still going to be there. There's short days, long days, late, late days. They're all different kind of days. Why not cluster all your, quote, patients into four days? And so you have a three. And so the doctor's like, you'll do that? 
He'll, so Freedom Friday, because the doctor only takes a half day Friday, and she's there all day, you know, doing the tea. And she's like, they leave. I want that. She got that. All you have to do is ask, what do you want? Go get free of that thing. What are you shackled on? What are you holding on to? Because when you're holding on to something, you're not free. That grudge, that emotion, your body gets sick. You know, oh, look at the mirror. Oh, I'll never be that way. You need to transform into Freedom Friday. It's where you feel free to be the best being that you are. Because most of us are human doings, right? I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do this. You don't have to do a darn thing. You get to do it. Because when you get to do it with that mentality, you become free. Because after Freedom Friday, you roll into Spontaneous Saturday. I like that. I Spontaneous. What do you want to do? I don't know anything. It's Saturday. Let's go do something. Let's go have fun. Let's be spontaneous. Spontaneous with maybe going out to dinner. Or spontaneous of maybe running outside or playing in a park. Or, or spontaneous having some fun intimacy, let's say. Right? Spark. Have a little spont spontaneity in your life. And if you don't, why? Why aren't you doing that? Because... We feel less than. We feel guilty. We feel we have one freaking life here. A one time. One time. And so if we have only one life, it's up to us and how we want to live it. Because the most important day is the first day of the week, believe it or not, which is Sunday. Monday's not the first day of the week. That's a work day. Uh uh. Sunday. So Sunday slow down Sunday. It's kind of like the Sabbath Saturday, right? But slow down Sunday. What are you slowing down for? Stop. Shh. Slow down. And so when we slow down, which is hard for me, you know, but again, slow down doesn't include emails. It doesn't include texting anything from work. It doesn't include anything from the work life that you do five days a week. It's slow down. It's with family. It's with God. It's with yourself. Maybe it's and you're outside doing whatever you want to do, or you're at a park, or, or I mean, gosh, you're playing racket. I don't care what it is what you want to do. You want to sit on the couch, wrap up in a blanket, and not do a thing. Awesome. Slow down Sunday. Have a day of rest. We're such human doings, as I mentioned. When do you stop? And I need to breathe, pause, and just be. That's getting well or seven days of success. Healthy body, healthy mind, healthy relationships. In order to have those, you follow Motivational Monday, Gratitude Tuesday, What If Wednesday, Transformation Thursday, Freedom Friday, Spontaneous Saturday, Slow Down Sunday. Because if you don't, then what are you going to do? You don't have a theme for the day because how in the world are you supposed to shape your life? The spiritual side of us. Remember, ask God after this, please. When this ends, just say, God, if you're real, and I, I, I even if you have a religious relationship, a different kind, grow into a spiritual relationship with God and say, Christ, if you're real, show me. Just show me. Ask. I'm telling you, it's craziness. Because when you do, you, st you have to, you got to humble yourself. It's not about you. It's the humility part of us. And when we're humble, we start focusing on the abilities of who we are and how God made us. Because it's all based on our personality style. Because with our personality style and the gifts that we have and the spiritual side of us and all of the different things that make us us, then we help to create an experience. That's the point of getting well or seven days of success. It's this experience in your life, this encompassing thing of who we are. And when you do that, I'm telling you, when you do that, your life is forever going to transform. My name is Dr. Eddie Weller. I thank you for listening. Gosh, if you'd like this, share this with people, subscribe. Oh, man, it, it means the world to me. So until then, think good things. Keep your head on straight and go get Weller. Have a great day.